Hi, you're with Chandeep and Goodly once again. And in this video, we are going to take a look at how can you do a same period last year for modified or a partial year. Let me just explain to you real quick with an example what I'm trying to do here. In terms of tables, I just have two tables. We have a sales table and the calendar table, one to many relationship, and they are linked using the date column. And if you go take a look at the sales table, we have a units column and a price column. Multiplying these two columns is going to give me the sales of that product. I come here and I have written a very simple measure for sales which is nothing but sum x go in every single row of the sales table multiply the price with the units and that gives me the total sales let's say for example i try to find the sales last year so i'm going to write another measure and i'm going to say sales last year which is nothing but calculate calculate total sales but not for the current year for the last year i'm going to change the filter context by using same period last year calendar date that's the function close the bracket press enter and i'm just going to drag that formula right here now you can see that the results are absolutely correct in the month of jan 2012 the number was 3455 if you compare that to last year jan i had 1199 that number is absolutely correct in fact the numbers are absolutely correct for each and every month right here there are three problems in this kind of layout or a pivot table the first problem is that when i do not have the sales for the current year that means september october november and december did not have the sales i should also not see the sales of the last year that means these numbers are are meaningless unless and until I have something to compare with. The second problem, which is a more critical problem, is that the sales total is for the month of Jan up till the month of August because only we have data until then. But here at the total level, we have all the months from Jan until December. Ideally speaking, if I'm trying to compare apples to apples, if my total here is only until the month of August, here also for last year, my total should again be only up till the month of August and not for the entire year. Finally, the grand total is meaningless. I do not want to work with a grand total, so I just want to get rid of that. Let's just see that how can we do all these three modifications to our little pivot table right here. So first things first, I just don't want the, the months where I do not have the sales so i'm just going to turn that off so i'm going to come to the sales last year measure and here i'm going to say a very simple thing that why don't you check that the sales has happened or not i'm going to write a very simple if function if the total sales is not equal to blank if this is true only then give me the total sales and the false part i'm going to leave it blank uh, which is going to take care of that so uh, it only finds the calculation only when the total sales is not equal to blank that takes care of the first problem where i want to display the last Last year figures only when the current year figures are there. Moving on to problem number two. The total here should be modified to only those months which are there in the current year. So if I have Jan until August in the current year, the last year total should also be for Jan until August. Now you have to understand that this calculation is only going to happen at the year level. It's not going to happen at the month level. It's only going to happen at the year level. So first of all, I have to find out a method to identify that, hey, do the calculation only for the year. So I'm going to use a function. Let's just create a dummy function to first identify that where am I working? Am I working at the month level or am I working at the year level? I'm going to use the function called has one value and I'm going to pick up the month right here has one value of the calendar month and let's just drag that measure into our pivot table let's see what happens so the has one value function is going to give you a boolean like a true and false has one value simply means that in this filter context which is 2011 and the month of Jan we just have one month which is the month of jan here in the month of feb we just again have one month so that's why we have a true but here at the total level the filter context changes and comes to the entire year so if you ask a question has one value of the calendar month the answer is false because you do not have one month you actually have 12 months here again when it's working at the month level it shows you a true but while working at the year level it shows you a false because you again have 12 months we're going to use the has one value function and only going to do the calculation calculation when the boolean returns me a false. So uh, I'm just going to take off that measure for now and write that measure right here. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to write an if. I'm going to say has one value of the calendar month and if this value is true that means if you're working at the month level this calculation is absolutely fine it's giving me no errors everything is going good but if you're working at the year level which is here i would like to modify the calculation i'd like to do the calculate function sure enough i'd also like to calculate total sales sure enough but the range of the dates i will decide myself so i'm going to use the function called dates between and it asks me for a date column which is nothing but my calendar date or my date table date column. It asks me for a start date. Now think about it. At the year level, 
The smallest calendar date is 1st Jan 2012. I'd like to start my calculation from 1st Jan 2011. So first of all, if I find the minimum date at the year level from the calendar table, that date is going to be 1st Jan 2012. Now what I will do is I will take that date and I will push it to 12 months behind using the edate function. So take that date, make it 12 months behind. That gives me 1st Jan 2011. Now it asks me for an end date. Think about it again. Over here at the total level, we have to find the last selling day. So the last selling day can be found out by the max function, which is again going to be a 2012 date, but I'd like to push it over to 2011. So I'm going to use again like an E date or an EO month. But the problem is that the last date could possibly be maybe the 20th of August, not really the 31st of August, but I still want to consider the entire months of sales. I'm going to use the function called max right here. And I'm going to say, hey, find the max of not the calendar date, but actually the sales date. All right. This is going to give me the last selling date. But I'd like to take this date to the end of the month of the last year. So instead of using the E date function, I'm going to use the EO month function. And again, say minus 12 dates between three inputs, the date, the start date and the end date. I'm done with that. I'm going to close the bracket, press enter. Let's see what happens. So the total revises to 8915. This is the total of all the months starting January up till August of the last year that's amazing final thing is that i also don't want the grand total here so again i'm going to use the has one value function but the has one value will not be for the month as we did it the last time but it's going to be for the year so i'm going to come here to sales last year uh, further revise my measure so i'm going to say if has one value of the calendar year close the bracket press enter and if that is the case please do the calculation if that is not the case, please do not do the calculation. All right, press enter and the total is gone. Uh, the only explanation that I have to give is that at the grand total level, you do not have a single year. In fact, you have two years. That's why the calculation was turned off. So that is my full and final formula, which gives me a modified and partial year calculation at the total level for same period last year. And you can use this pattern anywhere where you want a very similar result. Well, that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, hit me up in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help you out. And I'm also going to leave a link to download this uh, Power BI file so you can just take a look at that. And thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and bye-bye.